All right, welcome to AP Statistics. In the first unit, we're just going to take a look at a quick introduction to statistics, how we can take data and make sense of that data um, in order to tell a story exactly about what the data is talking about. Okay, so in this um, introduction, you're just going to gain a basic introduction to data analysis and statistics. At the end of this section, you'll be able to define and distinguish the difference between individuals and variables, understand what a quantitative versus a qualitative variable is and define what distribution means. You'll also be able to understand the idea of inference and what it means to make inference in a statistical sense. All right, so basically statistics is the science of data. So it's taking data and manipulating it to tell some sort of story. With data analysis, our basic goal is to take the data that we receive, organize it, display it so that somebody else can understand it, summarizing the facts about data, and specifically asking questions about the data and what it means. There are two definitions you need to be aware of when we're discussing data, are individuals and variables. Individuals are the object or the set of data that we're actually talking about, that we're studying. They don't necessarily have to be people. They can be, we can be discussing trees, cars, candies, um, houses, whatever specific instance that we're studying, the variable is the characteristic of the individual. So the variable would be the characteristics of the trees. Are they tall or short? The color of the cars? Are they black or red or green? The types of candies that we're talking about. There's two variables that we're going to discuss. The first one is a categorical or qualitative variable. What that means is it places an individual into several groups or categories. It's sort of your non-mathy variable. So it's going to be the color of the trees, the color of the cars, um, the um, brand of the candies that we're talking about. That is different than a quantitative variable, which actually takes on a numerical value for which we can do data analysis on, and it makes sense to find an average. We can find the average weight of the trees, the average height of the trees, um, the average number of peanuts in a Snickers bar. That would be a qualitative variable. Okay, um, so if you're having um, some questions about that, take a minute and watch the section 1.1 census at school where it will discuss data and um, individuals and variables. So if you can just take a minute, uh, try this question, you can pause the recording and then once you're done, go ahead and take a look at the answer on the next slide. Okay, so the individuals in this case were the bikes in the parking lot. That's what we were studying. The categorical variables are the make, the model, and the color. The speedometer or not, we're not looking at the speed, and whether it was a mountain bike or a road bike. So notice your categorical variables when we're looking at the make it's not, we can't do anything mathy with that. With the model, can't do anything mathy with that or with the color. Your quantitative variables, what can you find the average of, add, subtract, so on and so forth. That would be the weight of the bike and the number of gears. You can find the average number of gears on a bike um, or the average weight of a bike. Just remember that categorical is anything sort of non-mathematical, anything you can't take an average of. For example, just be careful because categorical variables aren't necessarily non-numerical. House numbers are numerical, but finding the average doesn't necessarily make sense. Okay, now when you distinguish between categorical and quantitative variables, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky when there are numbers involved and you're not sure whether it's categorical or quantitative. Just make sure on the AP exam you learn to distinguish the differences between categorical and quantitative variables because on the AP exam you'll be expected to analyze the difference between the two and specifically sometimes deciding which type of graph is best, a category and different graphs are better for categorical variables and quantitative variables. I just wanted to take a quick second and give you an example of something that is a categorical variable that is numerical. If you take a look at zip codes in your area, okay, 16023, um, 19010, those are all numerical, but it doesn't make sense to find the average of a zip code. What's your average zip code? That doesn't give you any sort of information. I can't analyze the average zip code. Okay, your year in school, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, you're placing people in a group, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, but I can't find the average grade. So what's the average grade? 9.5, that doesn't really make sense. Okay, 
if you place people in a group based on a range of ages. So if we're placing a people in a range of zero to nine, if we had individual ages, that would make sense to be quantitative, but since we're putting them in a range, that doesn't make sense because I can't really take an average because it's such a large range of values, okay? Phone numbers, classroom numbers, birthdays, if you can think of any others, um, take a minute and try to do that. So just remember for them to be quantitative, you have to be able to do some sort of numerical analysis on them, take the average, find, add them, find the median, etc. If you want some more practice, there's a worksheet under this section tried called trying the difference between um, categorical and quantitative variables. You can check that out. Okay, so go ahead and try this. Um, hit the pause button, try it, and then see how you do on the next slide. Okay, hopefully you chose E. There are two quantitative variables, age, I can find the average age, and income, I can find the average earned income. Your categorical is marital status, whether you're married or not, that's a yes or no question. You're sort of putting it into a bin or a category. So I think of categories as like if I had a bucket and I was placing people in buckets, okay, um, that's how I sort of remember the difference between categorical and quantitative. Okay, so marital status, you can put them in a bucket, yes or no. So a variable can generally take on many different variable ver many different values. In data analysis, we are specifically interested in how often a variable takes on each specific value. Statistics is going to be all about distribution, so get used to this word early. What a distribution does is it tells us what values a variable takes on and how often it takes on those values. It gives us a graphical, a very visual way of looking at our data. Because think about it, if you just have a bunch of numbers in front of you, that's probably not going to tell you anything. That doesn't give us an easy read on how many people are 15, how many people are 16, how many people are 17, how many people or 18, but a distribution makes a visual representation of the data that we're looking at. So let's just say that we were taking a look at cars and the average miles per gallon for each of those cars. What our variable of interest is, is the miles per gallon. Well, when I just look at this list of numbers, it's not easy for me to see what is the lowest miles per gallon, what is the highest, where's the average, but if I display that in a graph, it's very easy for someone who is not mathematical to look at this and say, hey, there's a car that only gets 14 miles per gallon. There's a car that gets 33, that's pretty good. And most are somewhere in between um, 25 and about 30. So that makes it very easy to interpret the data that you have. Okay, so how exactly do we take a look at exploring data? Number one, we examine each variable by itself. So the variable here was our miles per gallon, and then we study the relationship among the different variables, okay? We usually start by making a graph because that gives us a very quick visual representation of the data, and then we do some numerical summaries. So what is the mean? What is um, the standard deviation? How many data points did I have? And we'll be going over this later on, um, what exactly all these symbols mean on your graphing calculator. All right, so what exactly is inference? The whole point of statistics is to take data analyze it, and then do some sort of inference. All inference does is when we're interested in drawing conclusions beyond the sample data. So we take a small sample, and after we take that small sample, we ask the question, can we make a general statement about the population? Okay, why do we need to do this? Well, most of the time, any sort of um, statistical analysis that we're doing, you're never going to be able to get all of the population, so we have to take a small sample and make a generalized statement about the population. So let's say we take a sample of 100 FCPS students and conclude that 85% are right-handed. So I want to know, can we make a conclusion about the population of all students in the United States are 85% of all of them right-handed. Making a conclusion about the population of right-handed students is an example of inference. 
Okay, a sample is always going to be a subset of the entire population. Now it's going to be important later on to understand how to take a good sample. So how do we do inference? We take a nice sample from our population. We perform data analysis. Remember that that's creating a graph looking at the mean, median, um, average. Okay, then we make an inference about the entire population. Okay, so R, 85% of all of the students right-handed. Okay, so go ahead and try this one. Um, if you need to, hit pause, and then take a look at the answer on the next page. Okay, so this one is a little bit tricky. So just remember that in letter B here, all right, we're inferring something about the population from the sample. So we have a sample of our entire math class grades, and we're making an inference for everybody in the school. In the number three, or the third one, we have our entire math grades, and we're making an inference for somebody else at another school. So we're taking that sample and making a prediction about the population. Okay, so what I would like you guys to do is um, take a look at this one. This is just an example of um, some statistics, and when we do data analysis, we always have to keep probability in mind. So this is just a good probability activity for you to do as an introduction to how we're going to be looking at probability in the future. So if you could take a minute and try this, and then when you're done, at the bottom, fill out the Google Docs with the number of females that you got from step one. So you'll need to pause the recording, go ahead and read it, and then try that example. All right, so what are we going to be doing in the next section? On uh, the next section, we said that there were two types of data, categorical and quantitative. And in this case, in the next section, we're going to take a look at categorical data and exactly how categorical data can be correctly displayed in a graph.